both are. Marvelous. Your efforts have borne even more fruit. A new piece of the tapestry has been mended. The weaver's been hard at work with the thread Starstone has borne her, and a whole portion of history has been rewoven. Rejoice, my friends, rejoice! For now we witness a tale from the eons torn from time, but now, thanks to you, restored. After the war was won, the Void Dragon remained a great threat to all existence. And so, upon the anvil of creation, the God Box was crafted. The void was locked within, but still the question remained, who would guard the box? The two generals offered themselves. They would give up life and glory to stand sentinel. Transformed into immortal beings, they would be the Void's eternal guardians. They placed the box and the guardians in the first garden, home of Astarte and of the world's most beautiful power, Source. For time immemorial, the guardians stood by the god box, no longer human in body or in mind, but duty personified. So that is who we were. Demigod guardians of the God Box. Demigods. Immortals. I like what I'm hearing. As do I. We were beings of supreme importance once. Who's to say we cannot be again? Master. Other elementals lie in wait until you the word you command them to action. Which one of them, pray, has your preference? And that is your final choice? Yes, it is! Yes, indeed. That is our final choice. And thy will be done. is positively brimming with the surge of storm and lightning. As good a place as any for an air elemental to set up shop.
really think he'd let me in on it in advance if he'd been planning an affair with your sister? How can I tell? Maybe you taught him a thing or two about slinking around in between shadows. If that were true, Ikara, he wouldn't have been murdered, resurrected, and pursued by the bringer of the apocalypse as a result, now would he? Ha, true enough. Source Hunter, welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, yes, that was a small fib on my part, I'm afraid. Zandalore is known as the Keeper of the Source, after all. And I didn't know how Source Hunters would react to my association with such a... colorful character. How might I serve our mission? She desires to be Mother of the Void, but you have the power to undo her born-in-blood litter. Though they be baptized in blood, you can cleanse the Starstones still, and use them to thwart their grim queen. Good to see you on the Shelter Plane! A home away from home, is it not? It shall be my pleasure! Very right you are. These thoughts have been bubbling in my mind like so much drink in a still, but I believe they finally transformed into something quite potable. From what I can gather, the following stands to reason. The generals were put in charge of the god box, but they must have faltered. The void must have escaped, or how could it loom upon us once more? Perhaps that faltering could explain why their souls were loosed, and why those souls now reside so contentedly within you. Of all the wicked things, the one substance that can stand in the way of the void, and she's turning it into vessels of blight. You'll have to redouble your efforts, my friend. You'll have to find more Starstones before she does and forestall her insidious distortions. Our heroes have chosen fine vessels for their return. Mere humans, I'd have said quite a little while ago, and yet they managed to bring us together across space and time. Space, time, and a frigid prison wasteland. Now that you mention it, what did you do to Leandra to earn her icy ire, Ikara? Leandra and I have had our differences, but she herself would never have sent me to that frozen hell. Something or someone has taken hold of her. I'm sure of it. Why? I see Master Zigzax has upgraded from his shabby little hut at the edge of the hour, from the fairy dimension to the... Um, space-time weaver hunter imp one. What do you call this place again? Ha, is that so? It seems I have my share to learn about the magical world yet. The end of time. Well, suddenly your association with Master Zigzax makes sense. Well, I must say, it's no small relief to find myself in a safe haven among such allies. I believe the answer to that begins centuries ago, when your order was still cutting down so-called dark magicians by the dozens. Ours was a family of born sorcerers, you see. It was in our blood to interact with Source, but our parents were determined to curb the power within us. Still, their meekness wouldn't save them from the Source Hunters. I am. But there is more to our kind than they teach at your academy. Source isn't only blood and madness. It's like lightning, an exquisite current of great power. We sorcerers are like metal steeples. Source is drawn to us and it flows through us. But what so many fail to understand is that Source can be controlled. 
The power drunk through history have abused it, and all the world's sorcerers have borne terrible consequences. Tell me, Source Hunter, in all your hours studying the arcane arts, did your great masters ever suggest that perhaps not all sorcerers were evil? Did you ever hear, even once, that some of us were weak and gentle? That we could be simple forest folk healing the sick and frozen each winter? No. I doubt also that they'd mention that one day this hunt of yours would birth a broken soul powerful enough to inch all of Rivalon toward oblivion. No. No, that would be going too far and eschewing my own responsibility. I believe Leandra's long fall down did begin at the hands of some of your own order, but it was I who sparked all of this. They came on a quiet morning. My mother was wild with fright and commanded me to hide myself and Leandra outside, among the trees. Even at that young age, we knew not to question her. We climbed high into the branches of a nearby tree, and before we could look away, our parents were cut down without ceremony before our door. The Source Hunters sauntered away, wiping their blades with pride. Two more sorcerers dead, a job well done. From that moment on, everything was different. As we trembled in that tree, our fear and our desperation were so potent that the magic within us began to weave together. Our souls became forged together, our bond unbreakable. We would survive, thrive even, within those woods, never speaking to outsiders. Our soul forge meant that if one of us were to die, the other would instantly perish too. We kept one another close. Leandra's capacity was... enormous. Source didn't frighten her, and she delved into that dark well with terrible regularity. I did my best to guide her, but she fast outgrew my admonitions. My sister and I were mired in a solitary existence, witches among the trees when Zandalore came. Leandra especially couldn't leave him be. He was a feast of information, and she wouldn't rest until she'd absorbed every bit of knowledge he offered. Their days were spent on charms, hexes and the like. At night, Leandra would wander off to practice what she'd learned, and Zandalore and I would settle into our quiet tasks, side by side. We were a content trio, the three of us, but base impulse would undo us. As you know, Leandra and I were soul-forged. This offered us a window into one another's souls. I knew Leandra had developed feelings for Zandalore, and she knew I had too. But it was me to whom he confessed his love. Those quiet evenings together had captured his heart, as they had mine. Her heart broke the moment we announced our new attachment, and I felt the pain of it as sharply as a knife. She fled, without a word, and I didn't see her for two terrible years. My connection to her, our soul forge, grew weaker. It was as though some third entity, a parasite, were atop our souls, sucking the strength from it day by day. We've a single order of business first and foremost. Leandra is gathering an army, and I fear we'll have to get through it if we wish to find her. But first, we must learn more about Leandra's plans. How many of these so-called Immaculates does she have in her palm, and to what end is she directing them? Your journey must begin in the Lakula Mines, where she has been accumulating materials and manpower for a purpose as yet unknown. The way will be dangerous. Her allies are growing more powerful and numerous by the minute. But we must discover exactly what Leandra is planning and why. A soul forge comes with its own benefits, Source Hunter. Though our connection has weakened, I still see the occasional vision of Leandra's doings, the pangs of her deepest felt emotions, and flashes of her triumphs. One vision. I had thought it was only a nightmare. But now I see it was something much worse. Leandra is collecting materials, precisely what, I cannot say, and is hard at work shaping them into something... something sinister. 
Her frustrations are rivaled only by her mirth. I can see she's growing closer and closer to achieving something... something dire. You must make your way deep into the mines to see exactly what she's planning. I believe that our soul forge has been damaged. By what? I can only guess. The fraying of the bond between us has left Leandra adrift in a well of sorrow she truly believes will never end. What she needs is a hand. My hand, out of this abyss. If our soul forge is repaired, I am certain she'll cease blazing this path of destruction. I cannot condone the terrible things she's done, but I can seek to understand them. With our soul forge in such tatters, I believe Leandra is adrift in the not at all inconsiderable sorrows of our lives. What's more, I sense a terrible force bearing down upon the bond between us. It is hungry, and it consumes ever more of Leandra's mind and soul. I cannot say exactly what this force might be, but... I'm certain it's both driving me out and driving Leandra on. If I could only repair the forge, I'm certain she'd put a stop to this madness. The way may be treacherous, but you must get inside. I fear my sister is doing something dreadful so far from the light of day. Beware of the lost ones out there, Wanderer. Their blood is impure. Beware of the lost ones out there, Wanderer. Their blood is impure.
bitter gale!
how fast she scuttles! today.
No, I went out fighting in your name.
Into the fray once more. Back on my feet again. We have time for this. The bridges are infested with goblins, and we can't have them disturbing us. We'll bash any goblins that so much as look at us. And alert each and all of them to our presence. Ah, what a fool you are! Excuse me, madam. Be certain that this is the proper location. The spirits told me they did. Oh, I'm sure of it, madam. And which spirits have you consulted exactly well? Uh, the, the, the same as always, madam. The All Mother above. Then how exactly is it possible that our party has been searching for an hour, yet there's nearly a single star stone in our possession? I, I can't say for certain, madam.
death. my friend. Source Hunter.
A strange sort of pit. There must be a way to disarm it. Goddess's greetings, traveller, and blood's blessings. Well, so good of you to drop by, my liege. As always, be welcome.
Welcome be, O seeking souls, to this holy house of immaculates. I am Loic, enlightened one among immaculates, spokesman for the holy conduit, as she is spokesman for the goddess herself. Hers is the blood. Then it shall be my pleasure to answer them. We are the chosen ones of the goddess. The benedictions of the blood render our bodies and spirits unblemished, for such is her mercy that we may all become part of the sacred soul. And you too, Seeker, could become one such part. You find yourself in the goddess's temple, therefore it follows she wants you to take the true path. So here, have this hallowed tome, read it, Absorb the wisdom within, then find the second part and do with it the same. If an immaculate you want to be, a test of knowledge shall be your first step towards enlightenment. The conduit, yes. She, the most exalted of all, second only to the goddess. It was she who brought us first her divine words, then her divine will, a will made real in blood. Truly, though, she is quite beyond your concern, O oh wandering soul. She stands so very high above your humble station. The goddess is the light and life of all. Corrupt is the world that generations of men and beasts have left behind. But immaculate it may be once more, cleansed in the blood of the unworthy. The few, the proud, the enlightened, theirs will be her kingdom. When red has run until no red is left, a paradise we will have shapen, and the goddess will dwell among us. Do you hold it to be true, O seeker, that you are ready to be tested? A most sacred trio of queries shall I put before thee, but even if thou falterest but a single time, unworthy will thou be deemed of the goddess's love. Your unpreparedness disappoints me, but an immaculate is not born, he is made. Made you may yet be, through study, devotion and diligence. Give me the strength, O oh goddess, to Blessed become you. The goddess is the word. Through the conduit she speaks and through me her wisdom is repeated. How may I enlighten you? Then it shall be my pleasure to answer them. Do you hold it to be true, O seeker, that you are ready to be tested? Blessed be your willing spirit. We commence. Premise the first. In honor of the goddess, that which was Stella must become sanguine, correct? Correct. Agreed, that is correct. Premise the second. The blood of the greater should be used in service of the lesser so that balance may be achieved, correct? The blood incorrect. Yes, that is incorrect. Premise the third. 
Only those who have partaken in the spilling of blood and thereby created the stone that lives, the stone soaked with blood, may be called an immaculate. Correct? Correct. Agreed. That is correct. Most gratifying. Oh yes, most exemplary indeed. You have understood the words of the goddess, and I deem you worthy of her true test, of the true trial that shall make you an immaculate. To become an immaculate, you must experience both the goddess's bane and her boon. Leave Silver Glen and take the western path. Follow it to where the winds howl and a great skull looms within the rocks. There you will find it, the hollow and the true trial within. Immaculate guards bar the way, but tell them you have my blessing and they shall let you pass. But take utmost care, the road is beset with horrors and your metal will be truly tested before you've even set foot within the goddess's trial. You've got the look of one tested and ready for such a challenge. I bid thee good luck. Seeker, I shall await you in the Chamber of Blood. Appears to be locked. <laughs> 